Migraine is one of the most common neurological problems faced in the world. More than 1.1 billion people around the world face migraine and women have two times more risk than men in getting migraine. It can be disabling, students with migraine are not able to study, working professionals are not able to go to work, you can't do household chores, you can't meet your friends. It takes a toll on your social life, personal life and professional life. So what happens in migraine? Why does it happen? And what can you do to stop it? That is what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sid Warrior. I'm a neurologist and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about neuroscience and everything. If you're new here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Before I start, I want to tell you that this video is going to be in English and if any of you wants to hear this video in Hindi, subscribe to my channel because I'll be releasing a Hindi video on migraine very soon. Coming back to the topic, what is migraine? Migraine is a headache disorder that is characterized by some features and these features can be remembered by the mnemonic pound. So P is for pulsatile. Migraine headaches are often pulsatile in a throbbing sensation. O is for onset and the onset can be abrupt, slowly increasing over hours to days. U is for unilateral. So most cases of migraine have headache on one side of the head, but it doesn't always have to be like that because sometimes the headache can be all over the head. The N is for nausea and vomiting. Many patients with migraine can feel like throwing up during the attack. And D is for disabling. Migraine attacks can be very disabling, preventing you from going to work or going to college. But there are some other features of migraine as well. For example, auras. Auras are sensory phenomenon that happen before the migraine attack and if you are experiencing one for the first time, it can be scary. For example, auras can be in the form of flashing lights before your eyes or blurring of vision. You might see a rainbow in front of your eyes or you might have tingling in your hands on your legs. One half of your body might seem a little strange and this is a tricky part because sometimes migraines can be confused for having a stroke or paralysis. But all of these things can be an aura in a migraine patient and if you are somebody who's had these before, you will know that auras are often warning signs. So a migraine patient will know that, okay, now I have an aura, that means that my migraine attack is going to come. Thankfully, only 25% of migraine patients get auras and the rest only have the headache part. But it's not just pain and aura, migraine is also associated with other disorders like Mental health problems. Patients with migraine have a two to three times more risk of getting anxiety and depression. In fact, a study reported that more than half of migraine patients can have at least one episode of anxiety disorder once in their lifetime. The risk of bipolar disorders are also more in migraine patients and more than half of migraine patients complain of sleep disorders. And finally, gut disorders like irritable bowel syndrome are also seen more commonly in migraine patients. So that is what migraine looks like. It is a large spectrum problem and everyone's migraine can be unique. So if you are suffering from migraine, your story would be different from anyone else who's having migraine. So why does it happen? What causes migraine? The answer is complex because we don't really know of one reason that causes migraine, but we know that there are multiple causes and we do know that genetics play a role. If you have one parent with migraine, then you have a 40% more risk of getting migraine yourself. And if unfortunately both of your parents have migraine, there is almost a 75% chance that you too will get migraine at some point in your life. And apart from genetics, there are many other causes in the environment around you that can activate a migraine attack. And we call these things as triggers. One of the strongest trigger associated with migraine is stress, with almost 80% of attacks being triggered by stress in some way. This can be psychological stress around your work, pressures around your job, some fights that you have with your family, with your partner, or just stress around finances or your personal health. All of this stress can act as trigger for a migraine attack. Another common trigger is hormonal changes, which are seen more in women, especially around the time of periods, ovulation, or while taking oral contraceptive pills. In fact, having migraine with aura is a contraindication for taking contraceptive pills, which means 
means that if you are somebody with migraine, you should not be taking oral contraceptive pills. Other common triggers are skipping meals, having a disturbed sleep, taking alcohol, being exposed to strong smells like petrol, perfume or even paint and in 5% of unfortunate cases, sex can be a trigger for migraine. Now that we have spoken about what can cause migraine, let's talk about what to do with it. How do we manage a case of migraine? Now I want to be very clear that this video is for you to get information and not for you to start treating yourself. Please visit your family physician or neurologist for the actual treatment. But that being said, let's talk about what is the management of migraine. There are multiple different strategies that we can use and ultimately it is better to combine them. I'll roughly divide them into two categories, medical treatment involving drugs and non-medical treatment that does not involve any pharmaceutical agents. Now medical treatment is use of drugs that can relieve the pain and here again there are two types for acute pain management and for preventing chronic pain. Treatment of acute pain is called abortive treatment and these are usually painkillers that we use to stop the pain after an attack has already started. These are usually NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and the common ones that we use are ibuprofen and naproxen. Now these are definitely effective in terminating an attack but they're not really safe in the long term because they can cause damage to the body especially the kidneys which is why you should definitely consult your doctor before you take them and the other kind of medicines are preventive medicines that we give only to those migraine patients who get multiple attacks in a month and who are unable to function because of these attacks. Your family physician or neurologist should be able to tell you whether you need preventive treatment or not. Some of the common preventive migraine medicines that we use are beta blockers like propranolol, calcium channel blockers like flunarazine and tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline. Now all of these preventive medicines have very different drug profiles and which type of drug is best suitable for which patient is something that your neurologist will decide only after seeing you personally because all this treatment has to be individualized to the patient. Now coming to non-medical treatment that don't involve drugs, these are things that you can do, some lifestyle changes that you can make to help your own body and your nervous system regulate itself better and to prevent the attacks or reduce the intensity of attacks. These include breathing exercises like box breathing, 575 breathing, relaxation techniques, mindfulness exercises, neuromodulation techniques, meditation, and even some supplements like riboflavin and magnesium that have been studied in migraine. Speak to your doctor to find out which of these non-medical treatment options are best for you. So this is an introductory video to give you information about migraine. I hope you found this useful. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel to see more neuroscience and neurology and medical content. I hope you share this with your friends and family so that they too can benefit from this. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone. Take care.